Hi, I'm Scott Flowers with Cloud Ninjas. Today we're here to continue our series on the Dell PowerEdge R640 server. In this video, we're going to specifically focus on IP addresses. Let's get going. Well, hey, thanks for stopping by today to learn a little bit more about the Dell PowerEdge R640 server. Do us a favor, find anything in this video useful, click that like and smash that subscribe. All right, well, let's hop into it. Uh, this video is going to be specifically focused on IP addresses. Uh, we're going to show you two different ways to uh, update or set your IP address. Uh, we're going to do it via uh, DHCP, uh, which is personally uh, my favorite just because it's set up automatically. And we're also going to do static IP. Let's hop into it. Hey guys, this has been Cloud Ninjas, and today I'm going to show you two different ways to configure your IP address for your server. These two ways are going to be static and DHCP. So static is a more manual way to set an IP address. You're actually going to have to manually type in the IP address, the static gateway, the subnet mask, DNS server. So everything's going to be manual and you're going to have to know a lot of your network information already. So with that said, it's going to be a little bit more complicated, uh, but there are certain scenarios where you will need to set a static IP address. Um, and the other thing about a static IP address is that there is no, there's nothing really in place preventing you from assigning the same IP address multiple times. Obviously, if you have a very large network and you're setting everything statically, the chance of there being conflicting IP addresses is going to increase. So there's nothing really preventing that. Now DHCP, on the other hand, is a way to have an IP address automatically set to a device. Um, and whenever this happens, it's going to automatically put in an IP address, the static gateway, the DNS server, the subnet mask, um, and all the other network information. And then it also will handle different IP address conflicts. So because it's setting it automatically, it's not going to allow the same IP address to be used at the same time since it's pulling from like an IP address pool. So now since we've kind of gone over the differences between the two methods, let's go ahead and get started with static IP. So the first thing you want to do is go ahead and boot up your server and you're going to want to press F10 so you can go ahead and get into the lifecycle controller. Once you're in the lifecycle controller, you want to scroll down to settings and then you want to go to network settings. And here we can pick our specified NIC port. So in here we want to go down to IP address source and change and then this is where we're going to enter in all of our network information. So the first thing for the IP address is that you want to make sure the first three octets of this server's IP address matches the first three octets of your network. And then that last octet is going to be the identifier for the device. The subnet mask uh, is going to be the same subnet mask as what's in your network. And then the default gateway is going to be the IP address of your router. Now the DNS address, um, this will vary kind of depending on how it is set up in your network, uh, but ours specifically, we just have the IP address for Google's primary DNS server, so we're going to put that in there. Um, and a lot of networks are going to have this um, DNS server address as well. But once we're done with that, we can go all the way down and click on finish, and this is going to save our changes. Um, it's also important to note that you have some Ethernet cables connected to the NIC port that you're setting this IP address on. So now that we've set our static IP address, we're going to go ahead and show you how to set a IP address via DHCP. So we do this in the lifecycle controller as well. So like we said, if we boot on our server, then press F10, it'll bring us to the lifecycle controller. And then also in the same area as well, we want to go down to settings and then network settings. And then in here, the exact same settings, we're going to go down and do DHCP for the IP address source, and that's it. We're going to go all the way down and then click on finish. And this is going to go ahead and save our changes, and this is what's going to go ahead and automatically configure the network information for our server. So we can click OK. And we have successfully set an IP address via DHCP. So very straightforward video. We set a static IP address and a DHCP IP address. Um, these are two different methods to 
configure your IP information for a, for our server so we can go ahead and connect it to the internet. So if you found this video useful, go ahead and leave a like and smash the subscribe. And if you're interested in purchasing a custom built Dell, HP, Supermicro server, or even Intel scalable servers, uh, AMD Epic, AMD Ryzen servers, you can go ahead and head to our website and build one on our custom configurator. Or you can go ahead and email us at sales at cloudninjas.com. That's sales at cloudninjas.com. Anyways, guys, take care.